Hi there, so in this video we're going to be running through some training on how to use the Task and Sub Tickets app for Zendesk. The things we'll be going through today is first just about how you can add tasks manually to a ticket. Uh, then uh, for tasks lists that you, you use often, you can save those for reuse um, and, and, and we'll show you how that can work. I will talk about some links, tags, logs, that type of stuff that you know general stuff about uh, task lists uh, and then we'll get into the automation side or the deeper side of the app uh, being how to automatically apply task lists or spin up sub tickets um, using ticket templates um, and then finally uh, being able to leverage uh, the kind of ticket fields that the app pushes information through to uh, to uh, kind of um, you know build views and, and macros and that type of stuff so let's just jump in and have a look at what you can do here so here we have an onboarding uh, ticket so we for, for an onboarding flow for a, a customer we might have um, you know tasks like uh, contract uh, signed um, uh, deal closed um, yeah, create implementation plan, uh, that type of stuff. Um, and you know, th these are just tasks that I can create and then check off as we go along here. But if I'm using this uh, list time and time again, I can save that list for reuse over here. Um, and I can just do a search for all, through all of my saved lists and select the one that I want to add and bang, it's added here. Uh, with every task list that you apply to a ticket, uh, you can kind of move it around uh, like so. Uh, you can wrap it up here uh, to, 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 to better kind of um, have more tasks on the ticket uh, and still be the ticket, you know, still be in a usable state. Uh, and then I can kind of go through and check these things off as well. Um, and uh, other points to note about tasks that are applied uh, using a saved task list is that you can create have uh, links to external documentation to help the agent know what to do when completing that task. You can have notes here. Um, and then from a workflow perspective, uh, when you complete any of these tasks, you can set a tag to automatically be applied to the ticket uh, so that then you could have a trigger uh, that checks for that tag running behind the scenes uh, and then uh, automatically does whatever you need to do to the ticket to move it on, whether that's uh, reassigning the ticket, escalating the priority, setting it to a different phase, applying a different task list, it's up to you what you do there. Um, the last thing I'll note about uh, kind of any task here is, uh, and we'll be getting into this uh, a bit more on the automated side later, is that you can convert any task into a sub ticket. So if I click on convert to new ticket here, uh, I can create um, using a, a template, but in this case, we're just gonna create a new ticket from scratch. We'll call it uh, site audit um, and we'll assign it over. Uh, you know, we can basically have um, a conversa uh, conversation uh, with uh, an external, uh, uh, you know, a separate conversation from the main ticket um, while it's still being connected via a link. So every sub ticket is linked to the parent ticket uh, based on uh, this uh, link here and vice versa, the, the, the parent ticket is linked to the child ticket uh, here. Now, once you convert a uh, task into a sub ticket, uh, it can't be checked off anymore like these other tasks. Um, it, the status of the task is the status of the ticket. So if I want to complete this ticket, I have to um, uh, solve the ticket. And in solving the ticket, coming back to the main ticket here, um, we'll be able to see that this is now uh, been checked off. Cool. Okay, so that's uh, an example um, of uh, how uh, you can kind of use saved task lists. Um, I'm going to remove this task list and what we're going to do now is create our own task list. And the way that you do that is go into the task list on uh, the uh, the left hand side, sorry, the tasks app on the left hand side here. And in the task lists section, we can create a new task list by clicking uh, add task at the top right hand side. And we're going to call this one our uh, onboarding uh, uh, list. Uh, we can set a tag to automatically be applied to the ticket when it's uh, added to the ticket um, and uh, you can group the task list together or you can add them all as individual tasks 
Um, manual means that you, you know, agents can add the task list uh, at any point on the ticket versus it only being able to be added uh, automatically uh, like so. Uh, well, if that was switched on, which we'll do in a sec. Now, um, <clears throat> once you've got your task list, you're gonna have to start adding tasks to it. So I can click on uh, add task here and then uh, we can, you know, add a, a name for our first task. Each task list, as you saw before, can have its own notes. You can have a link to external documentation. Um, it, we'll get onto this uh, in a sec, but this is how you can uh, set any task to be converted into a sub ticket the instant the task list is applied. Um, and then you can say, uh, for example, when this task is completed, uh, we'll add a tag to the ticket. Um, uh, for example, one common uh, scenario you might want to do is based on a task being specific task being completed, you may want to set the ticket to an open status. Um, so for example, just to show you how that would look, uh, you have your parent ticket here, um, uh, you set your parent ticket to an on hold while that sub ticket is being worked on. Uh, the parent ticket stays on hold, but then once the sub ticket is completed, it automatically reopens uh, the parent ticket. Uh, you could do that simply by specifying a tag here and creating a trigger that says when a ticket is updated and contains the tag open ticket, set the status to open uh, like so. So uh, that's that's all very well and good. Uh, you can also bulk edit task lists as well. So if I click this here and I, I copy and paste a list that I've um, had previously, I can uh, instantaneously kind of you know create a full list of, of things there. I will of course need to still go in and edit the uh, kind of each task list to, to, to if I've got extra information as part of uh, these items here though. So now that we've got our task list and it's been created, if we come back to uh, I'll just close this sub ticket. Uh, if we come back to this ticket here, <clears throat> I'll be able to uh, find that list uh, here. I'll be able to see that uh, these are the tasks. Um, uh, uh, associated with that. So cool. Um, uh, now what we want to be able to do though is be able to automatically apply this task list that we've just created uh, at the point that, um, uh, that a ticket is created uh, uh, where, where the onboarding form is selected. So the way that we uh, do that is we can kind of uh, click to edit this and make it automatic. So when I check uh, automatic here, what happens is that uh, behind the scenes a webhook is created that uh, you can call in any trigger uh, that will, uh, when when called, will automatically apply the task list. Uh, but you don't have to do any setting up uh, or you know digging through admin to, to find that. Uh, when you set it to automatic, there's a shortcut here to allow you to create your uh, your trigger. Uh, when you click this, a trigger is created, but this trigger in its current state will never uh, fire uh, because it's checking for tags that uh, actually, uh, you know, is you know, extremely unlikely to ever exist on the ticket. So they're just test tags, uh, allowing you to, you know, test the, uh, the the flow out when you want to. But then when you want to change it, uh, you can say, for example, when the ticket is created and uh, the, say for example, the form is, uh, you know, onboarding, client onboarding here, then what happens? The task list is added. So this is the webhook uh, that's automatically added in there as part of uh, the, the trigger that's being called. Like I said, you can uh, call this webhook on any uh, other kind of trigger as well. This is just a shortcut way of building it. So now uh, that I've created the trigger back over in, uh, you know, if we were to create a test ticket here and set the form to be a client onboarding like so uh, by creating this uh, ticket here that will cause that trigger to fire behind the scenes and we will be able to see that task list being uh, automatically applied like so um, cool so we've got a bunch of tasks automatically applied to the ticket Okay, what, up, what, what about if we wanted to have these uh, tasks here automatically converted into sub-tickets? Um, potentially, we might not even want to have a, our own task list on those sub-tickets. Well, this is where Ticket Templates comes in. So if we click over it back into the app, you do have this whole other section uh, for Ticket Templates. 
um, and you can create uh, as many ticket templates as you want that can be used either uh, manually being applied to task list items uh, already existing on uh, tickets or uh, automatically converting uh, items within task lists to tickets. Um, creating a, a template, uh, you can see here, just like filling out a regular ticket, you set your subject, description, and uh, all of your fields here uh, are just like regular fields. Um, however, there are uh, they've, they've all got the ability to pull information from the parent ticket. So here I can say, bring across the parent tags or set the priority to the same as the parent or use the same uh, uh, kind of um, ticket form as the parent uh, here. Um, for uh, uh, fields that are not uh, drop down checkbox or multi-select fields, you are actually able to um, use a placeholder as opposed to uh, just selecting same as parent uh, because what the placeholder allows you to do then is to uh, be a bit more flexible. So for example, I could copy this uh, check-in date to a different um, date field or um, if I wanted to uh, have, uh, you know, yeah, so check-in date or maybe we want to put it to the from date or something like that. So, you, you know, it creates a bit of flexibility. You can also just type in uh, straight text into uh, these uh, fields here as well. You've got to be mindful of the, the ticket type. Uh, so date fields will only accept dates. Uh, integers will only accept uh, numbers, but um, yeah, there is some flexibility around there. So just to show you a template that I've already uh, got created for this uh, onboarding flow, we do have a training session for new customer uh, template set up. So it's got its name. Um, when uh, the, uh, the this, this uh, sub ticket is being marked as uh, solved, then the parent ticket we can see here we'll get the tag open underscore ticket which comes back into that flow that we talked about before. Um, agents uh, in this current state will, uh, because it's set to manual, will be able, able to apply this to any uh, kind of uh, task on the ticket. So say for example, um, I've been, you know, I've done the, the, the on-site training uh, previously, um, uh, but uh, it was evident that a further training session needed to be done. So, uh, you know, I could be creating a further training session like this. And then because it's manual, I can go and convert it to a new ticket and select the template for uh, training uh, from here, uh, like so, um, which would go and create another sub ticket. Um, so uh, yeah, so it's been set to manual. Then we just, like I said before, for you filling out the, 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 the stuff as if it's a, a, a just a regular ticket um, and we've got some stuff that's being copied across from the parent ticket and some uh, of the fields as well. So okay, so how do we get this uh, template uh, of you know a predefined ticket that's copying stuff from the parent to be automatically added as part of when the task list is uh, added? Well, this is where you come back to the task list go to your a kind of a task in question, on-site training. We can click on that and then we can choose that template from the list here. So if I go to uh, you know, a training session for new customer and update this. Now, at, if we close this ticket here and we're gonna recreate a new onboarding uh, ticket, test two, test two, and then we'll choose onboarding. Yeah, like so. And because we've created a ticket, the form is client onboarding. Once again, the trigger is going to fire that's uh, going to have that task list automatically applied to the ticket. But in this case, uh, the um, uh, one of the tasks, because we've specified it to be a sub ticket, is going to be automatically spun up into its own uh, thing. And as you can see, it's uh, been uh, added here. And if we click into the on-site training, we'll be able to see uh, all the you know the settings that we had in that that template has been applied. Uh, and in this case, it's uh, it's even kind of uh, applied another task list, um, and that would have been based off of a, a tag that we've uh, added to the ticket and another trigger firing, just the same way as 
um, in the parent ticket, we had that trigger firing that uh, we set up that trigger to fire when the ticket was created. So yeah, I mean, this essentially shows you how you can be creating um, you know, large amounts of tasks over quite a few uh, tickets. In, in, in this case, there's even sub sub tickets being created. Uh, so hundreds of tasks over tens of tickets and uh, all with the click of a finger. So there's some significant time savings. Uh, there's also an enforcement piece. So you can uh, set within the settings of the app so that you can't actually solve a ticket. Uh, if I was to uh, sign it as required. So if I was to... Uh, and then click to solve it. He's saying here, cannot solve tickets before all tasks are completed. So that's just a setting, but it, it, there is an enforcement element to it. The other thing uh, here is that there is a uh, uh, an audit log. So uh, if anybody was to check tasks off that um, uh, you, know, you wanna see who's done what, uh, then you can always click on the audit log and see uh, the agents or the, the you know what's what's been happening in the history of it. So to show you where that setting is, so coming back into the app over here, if we go into the settings part of the app, uh, you can say um, allow tickets to be solved with uncompleted tasks, and this is just turned off for now. But if you want to allow that, then you can do that. So that that also. So yeah, so that's how you can automatically apply task lists, automatically turn those task list items into sub tickets. Um, the last thing I wanted to kind of talk about is how you can leverage information on uh, the ticket. So say for example, we've got these, uh, you know, uh, a few tasks uh, completed. Uh, we want to be able to communicate to the customer uh, where maybe the project is up to or the, the, the item uh, uh, list is up to here. Um, uh, so this information, so that the remaining tasks, the number of uh, completed tasks, uh, the, the total number of tasks is stored in ticket fields that are used uh, behind the scenes. So you won't be able to see them on the left hand side here, but they are being stored. If we check the events log here, uh, we'll be able to see number of completed tasks, remaining tasks like so. So uh, you can create, so for example, a macro. So if I go uh, remaining tasks, I've got a macro here that shows how this works. Uh, we've, we can say, you know, so far we've completed three of the nine tasks. Uh, and uh, this is a list of all of the, uh, the tasks that are still remaining. So you can uh, leverage those ticket fields in that way. Um, you can also uh, build views uh, to, you know, that, that show off these ticket fields as well. Uh, now, one of the ways that you can build a view is based off of, um, uh, say for example, uh, the tags that the app uh, adds to the ticket while the, um, the, 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 there's tasks remaining. So you can see here, there's a task remain, there's a task present tag. So there's, these, are, these are global tags that the app uh, applies. Um, so we have a look here, um, you know, at the point that a task list is applied to a ticket, you, you get these tags added by the app. Now, at some point, uh, all of the tasks get completed and as a result of those tasks getting completed, the task remain tag gets removed and the task done tag gets applied. Uh, and this is just uh, by default how the app uh, kind of works. Um, so you could build a view, uh, say for example, if you wanted to see all the tasks remaining uh, based off of the tasks remain tag. Um, and uh, then we can see here, for example, we've got a view here to show us all of the tasks that are uh, tickets with tasks remaining and the remaining tasks are listed out like so. So that's uh, um, you know uh, another thing that you can be doing uh, with the app. So that pretty much covers um, how the app works and how to set things up. Um, uh, let us know how you go. If you've got any questions, uh, feel free to email us at support at sweethawk.com. Thanks for watching.